Hello and welcome to Ben's Addiction. If the left hand side of your engine looks this bad, you have multiple leaks. This is the M272 Mercedes engine that is built from 2005 onwards. It applies to any six and eight cylinder Mercedes Benz from 2005 to 2012. If your engine is suffering severely from oil leaks, especially uh, on the a left hand side of the engine you might have these types of leaks first you might have the oil housing uh, gasket leak then second you might have the oil cooler gasket leak and third you might have the power steering fluid reservoir seal leak and today we are going to tackle this issue one by one in one single project I'm going to throw all the specs and all the tools and all the ingredients required to complete this job. At the end, we will end up with a good clean engine like this. To complete this whole job, you need a funnel, a 50 Newton meter torque meter, number 12 and number 14 E-type sockets, you need a picking tool, you need a long ratchet with 17 millimeter socket, a cleaning brush, and some other uh, general sockets and screwdrivers. You need Mercedes-Benz approved steering fluid. You need some general degreaser. You need a good full synthetic 5W40 oil, 8 liters of that. 8 liters of Mercedes-Benz approved coolant, which is the pink one in this case. You also might want to replace your thermostat and housing, some of the idlers as well as serpentine belt. So make sure you prepare for those items as well. But first of all, we need to clean up the left hand side of the engine. I'm not gonna work on this engine like this. I'm going to use some sorts of degreaser to get rid of some of those grease that has been over there for the past few years. So here is my recommendation before starting this video. Do not neglect your hydraulic steering reservoir because there is an inbuilt filter in it. Do not neglect replacing that o-ring because it's going to mess up your engine again. And do not ignore replacing any of the when you want to work on this area. So let's finish this project once for all. Thanks for watching in advance. The next time you see this engine, hopefully it's not going to be this bad and it's going to be much cleaner. It's so much cleaner now, it's washed. Try to cover them and not uh, degrease the electrical and not even uh, pressure wash all those sensors and electrical. But anyway, you will get some water in there and I'm going to dry it using air pressure. you're going to lose a lot of coolant and you are going to end up probably a few debris inside your oil so it's the best to do a, a complete uh, coolant flush and oil change after so make sure you prepared for that in terms of uh, ingredients and let's get started uh, while our engine looks much better and cleaner after washing and air drying so now we can go ahead and take all the bolts and nuts and of course drain the coolant first. So make sure your engine is not hot so you don't want to burn yourself when uh, removing the coolant and the engine oil. Make sure you prepare, put something under your car and a bucket would be ideal. Okay, the best way to remove uh, the coolant from the system and the cleanest way is that plug over there, the red one, which is on the radiator. So let's remove that and you want to at least remove half of the coolant inside the system if you really don't want to flush all of the coolant out. Okay, the next thing we want to remove is this hose over here because 
it's out in our way. So it's better to remove this first before wasting so much time on, on it. And you just need to slide it a little back, but in this case, it just didn't want to come off. So I removed the whole C-clip over there and it just needs a bit of wiggling around because it has been over there for ages. Now it doesn't want to come off. Okay, and finally it's out without any spilling of coolant. So coolant is in there. If you need to replace your thermostat, this is a very good time too. This is almost a very good time. If you have bell cracked or it's very old, you want to change that too, because in five seconds, we are going to remove the serpentine belt as well. And next thing I want to do is loosen this oil filter cap so the oil can go down and that makes the engine more clean and less oil spillage on the block of the engine. Just need a bit of air in the system so the oil can go down much easier. That's it. Next, we want number 17 socket with a ratchet as well as a pin. So as soon as we move the tensioner like this, we want to put this pin in the hole that is underneath the tensioner. I'll show you in a few seconds. So belt is out of the way now, almost. The beautiful thing about removal of the serpentine belt and doing all this maintenance is you have access to thermostat, all the idlers that might be noisy and it might be the time for changing. As you can see, I have no problem with my idlers, so they're not noisy, so I'm not going to replace them. Next, there are three screws that you want to remove, and these are T30 torque type screws from this reservoir. And then what you need to do is removal of a sear clip over here, you can see. So this is what holding the main outlet to the pump. So if you remove that sear clip from here, you will be able to remove this uh, reservoir afterwards. But make sure you have a rag or something, or you might want to drain this beforehand so you don't make a mess on the engine. Okay, this is the bad seal, as you can see over here. Okay, this is how the C clip is or sear clip is, and you only need a hook like this. Otherwise, it's a very tight uh, space over there, as you can see, especially with the ABS pump over here. There is no visibility, so I could not show you. The only way is just sending a hook like this and pull it out so you can release the reservoir. Okay, next we have five T30 bolts on the oil cooler side. You want to loosen this one, not much, just a little bit. That helps you while the whole housing is in place. That makes the job easier. So let's go ahead and loosen this five T30 because when you Take it out, it's going to be not easy without uh, an impact gun. Okay, now that we have removed almost everything, there are only six bolts to take the whole 
oil filter housing. Let's take these six bolts. They are all different sizes, so you need to make sure to mark them. So you need E12 socket to go ahead and remove those six bolts. Much easier to use a ratchet gun and you can leave the bolts in place for later references. This is the second one, both of them at the very bottom. The third one is right in the middle. Depending on the angle of your thermostat housing, you might be able to use a 10 millimeter socket, a skinny one, to remove this one behind the thermostat housing. So that's what I am doing now. It's a very tight space, but number 10 normal socket can really help. Tensioner is on your way to remove one of the bolts the very lower bolt, so I'm just taking the tensioner all the way out, that makes the job much easier. But some people, depending on the tools they might have, might be able to remove that, but that doesn't worth spending the time on it, in my opinion, so I'm removing two bolts to remove the tensioner. This is one. Now removing the second bolt for the tensioner and as you can see the tensioner is almost falling off. Now it's much easier for you to see how I have locked the tensioner in place like that. This needs 17 millimeter socket and these are the two bolts for the tensioner. So you need to remove these two to access the lower bolt for the oil filter housing. Now finally a very good access to the final lower bolt. It's coming out easily. So all in all, it's this project is not a big project. You don't need to be an advanced hands-on mechanic. It doesn't really require lots of tools either, but definitely make sure you have the E-type sockets, especially E12 is necessary. And I think we have all five of them loose. Okay, these are the bolts. This one is the problematic bolt that needs the tensioner removal as you can see one two three and this is the fourth one and one is this one behind this housing over here okay change of plan for the this top bolt over here it's not completely removed so i have to take the thermostat housing as well So we need to remove this to access the other bolt for thermostat housing. And there it is. Okay, so we removed the thermostat housing because we couldn't completely take off this last top bolt over here, but it seems like it's done. Yeah, there's there's no way, there was no way to remove the 
this last bolt over here without removal of the thermostat housing. And that's what we have here. Okay, this is what we got here. It's finally out. Of course, if you do not clean up properly, you will have the remaining of the gaskets and seals stuck to the block. And that means problematic and issue with leak, upcoming leaks. Okay, now all you need is a bit of uh, degreaser spray. And of course, a soft brush, not a wire brush. And give it a bit of massage. So as you can see, it's already coming off. So it might take five to 10 minutes, but gradually you need to soften. <laughs> As you can see over here, this uh, seal is no longer good because it's completely flat and busted. So now that it's softened with using gas and of course degreaser, you know how easy it's coming off in one piece. Okay, so this is the thermostat housing and thermostat and there's a sensor in there and it's a hell of a job to remove this old gasket from here because it's very thin and it's very dry and it's very uh, tough. So also you need to make sure you check the seal on your thermostat as well.
So there is a seal over here too that it sits around and there's a great chance that after 200,000 kilometers, this is at the end of its life. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this with a new one that comes with a new sensor, housing and thermostat. And that's only 45 Australian dollars. So I think it really worth not doing this job because first of all, I can't uh, find a gasket uh, on eBay or anywhere else. So I'm going to replace it all. And that's what I'm recommending you as well. Okay, whatever you want to do to wash these and clean them, please do not put them in dishwasher because your wife might not be happy in that case. But these are now clean, very clean, and there is nothing in terms of debris and dust and adhesive and red washer inside them. Okay, if you if you need to wash this anyway, uh, it's not a bad idea as long as you make it completely dry after. Uh, drying this is possible because it's perforated inside and there are many grooves. And whatever you do, you cannot uh, make it dry uh, in a old-fashioned way. So use a heat gun or heat or at least you need a few days to uh, put it in sunlight or anything like that. But I'm going to use a heat gun to make sure it's getting hot so I will get uh, rid of the the water inside okay these five uh, torque screws the torque spec for these are 12 newton meter and for the rest of the uh, crankcase uh, oil filter housing it's 20 newton meter so make sure you torque them to the correct torque spec this is now dry Let's go ahead and put it on the oil cooler housing. Here is the new gasket. Everything is clean and it all goes back. Not trying to do anything crazy. Just a little tightening. Slowly. At this stage, make sure the crankcase is completely clean and free from the old gaskets. Don't use any sharp tool. So let's do this. Okay, the important point is here that there are different lengths of bolts. The rule of thumb is you should not end up with more than 20 millimeter of thread. So that's an easy rule to remember. So now the torque for these bolts are uh, 20 newton meter, the six of them. Okay, let's have a look at what we have done here. So we had one, two, three, four, five bolts over here with two, with 20 newton meter of torque. The last one is over here, the sixth one. We torque down these bolts over here by 12 newton meter. And next would be 
the thermostat housing logically okay here is the gasket for thermostat and here is the thermostat housing if you're after the torque setting uh, for these two bolts it's actually 10 newton meter if you are uh, not confident about the future leak of this housing I'm not suggesting but I'm going to use a bit of silicon not too much just a little silicon to make sure this is going to be waterproofed and it's not going to leak So the torque for the thermostat housing is 10 newton meter, but I'm going to torque it to 5 newton meter first, leave it for half an hour, and then because I used some silicone as well as the new washer, I'm going to leave it for half an hour and then retorque it to 10 newton meter. Also, don't forget to put back this little sensor over here the connector need to go in and gets locked and also there is a clamp here that you need to put it back on okay an hour later and let's torque this down to 10 newton meter Okay, it's time to put back this uh, tensioner over here. Make sure uh, you check all of your tensioner. If they make noise, replace them for sure, because you don't want to do this job twice. And then make sure it's nice and clean. So every time you look at your engine, you actually enjoy it. So it really helps if you have electric ratchet for this type of work. It makes it much easier and probably quicker as well. Okay, it's almost tight. Let's make it tighter to 20 newton meters. Okay, there is one more thing to do and this is this last uh, idler pulley and of course check this one for noise as well and clean it if you like. Okay, this one is the smaller uh, bolt type. So it's actually the E10 so uh, the torque setting would be 15 newton meter. The next thing I want to do is something different. So we are going to replace that seal for the hydraulic pump reservoir. That's the guilty one. So that's the seal that prones to leak a lot. So that's one of the issues that M112, M113 and M272 and M273 engine has. So let's go ahead and replace that seal too. And to take off the seal, the easiest way is using one of these hooks. Or otherwise you might want to use a tiny skinny screwdriver to go underneath and simply take it off. So as you can see, this is worn, this is too flat and skinny to hold any fluid in there. So it's time to replace. 
So here we got a brand new one, flexible, nice, and a lot of meat. Uh, it's guaranteed to keep the fluid in there for next 10 years. So all we need to do is lube it up and put it in there. Also, I have a complete video uh, about this uh, reservoir. As you know, there is a filter inside that you cannot replace. So the best method is to go ahead and replace the whole thing. That makes it leak proof and makes your power steering uh, functional without dirt and hopefully uh, no expensive repair in the future. This is a kind of maintenance you need to do every 100k. You see that little mesh filter in there? That gets clogged. And as I showed you before, there are three T30 millimeter uh, screws in there. So the only thing that is tricky is when you put this uh, reservoir in place, there is not much uh, room in there to see or work. So it's gonna take time to put this circlip back in there, in that groove because there is no visibility, especially on this car with the position of the ABS pump. Okay, you can say from the bottom of the older bottle that it has been leaking for a while, see? Okay, before putting your uh, belt, make sure that all your pulleys are clean and not greasy, oily, so you don't want more noise or uh, less grip over there. So make sure you clean with a microfiber rag before. Okay, next project is to put on the belt. Okay, it's, it's a good time to uh, replace your belt if it's cracked or if it's old, making sure it's going to last another 100,000 kilometers. Okay, the belt is on and it took five minutes to figure out where to go because this is complicated. We have three idler pulleys and believe it or not, you should you should do this yourself. But not so complicated when you have a diagram. So now we can release this pin from here. Okay, again, number 17. Okay, now our belt is in place, nice and easy. Okay, there are a few more things to do here. First of all, we need to put back this hose. Second, and not to forget, you need to put back the hose for the return hose for the steering wheel fluid. And we want to put back the fluid for steering. And of course, we want to change the oil and filter. A little uh, o-ring over here. And it's not a bad idea to Lubricate it just a little bit and easier. And then it's better to pull this pin out first. So all that required is a yeah. and it's in. Just need to put this back on. This loop over here should be beside the filter. 
Okay, now you have two choices using the original clamp, which uh, reusing it is not easy, especially in tight location like that, or using a, an aftermarket one like this. Since it's a return and it does not have a real pressure, uh, I'm happy to use the aftermarket one. Okay, the clamp is there, and the hose is here, and the belt is there, and everything is in place. All we need to do is two fluids, change, uh, top up the fluid, replace the filter, and that's all. So make sure you use a proper uh, Mercedes-Benz approved steering hydraulic fluid. And make sure you use a funnel not to make a mess. Just going to top it up. And as you can see, the fluid is pretty clear. And I think we do have enough for now, but of course we need to uh, run the car and see and check it right after. After warm up, before warm up. So we can check that later because we have enough fluid in there. Okay, when replacing the oil filter, don't forget this one as well as two more O-rings over here. So all in all, we will have three O-rings. Okay, the torque setting for the oil cap is of course 25 newton meter. Replacing the oil and filter is recommended after this job because you might end up some of the coolant inside the uh, oil pan. So you don't want to mix that. First, and then second, don't forget the third fluid, which is the coolant fluid. And uh, just to assure you, the coolant system is self-bleeding, so you do not need to do anything, but you need to check a few times on the coolant level, especially after the engine warms up and comes on. So make sure the first uh, few uh, startups check the coolant level and make sure it's in the correct position and always check for the leaks in the first few days because you might make mistake or the material might be low quality who knows okay all you need is number 13 socket and a bucket Okay, so here we have the, the engine oil was dirty, but the engine and the oil pan is super clean and the surrounding as well. And hopefully we will not have any oil leaks anytime soon. Let's top up the engine oil. I'm going to use 5W30. And for the coolant, make sure you use the Mercedes approved coolants. So it doesn't harm the aluminum pieces.
Okay, finally, after a week of working uh, almost two hours a day, uh, this is almost done. We topped up the coolant. We will check it later when the thermostat opens. The oil is in and checked. We will check it again. The gasket is done. All the gaskets, including the idlers and pulleys, checked. The belt is checked. The oil filter changed, oil changed, and the coolant renewed. We also topped up the steering fluid. And now we are ready to start the engine and enjoy many years of no oil leaks from these areas at least. The engine looks very nice and clean and if you compare it to the previous photos and videos that I provided earlier, you will see that it's very shiny now. So I'm very happy. Let's start up the engine and enjoy the sound of this Mercedes. Of course, it's gonna starve for oil for the very first few seconds because we changed the uh, engine oil as well as the filter. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching, liking, subscribing. Please don't forget to give me your feedback and drop a comment down below. Have a great day. Enjoy your Mercedes. Bye. Let's go.